the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? John, I got you. John, I Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? He put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, it's a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's tag grounded, I don't trust these feelings Spread across your nose, and I'm on your air Highest next on the cloud, am I in the air? Sunday night's prime time, I flex my better Voltron transform to DX Don Mega and off-scene, you probably think I'm nice Cause I flow like a stream to your wireless device And the smoke full of steam on any given night, I'll show up like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best about I, tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. What is going down, everybody? Welcome back to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? I'm your host, Don Mega, and I welcome you to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's season 20, episode 17, and tonight's show is titled Uploaded. I welcome you once again to the show. This is your one-stop shop for all the latest and greatest in entertainment news, television, movies, reviews. This is where you come to to get it all down. It is May the 4th. We're broadcasting live from the Red Dragons Radio Studios here in lovely Tucson, Arizona. May the 4th be with you. That's right, it's Star Wars Day. Um, All of the Skywalker Saga, all nine films, are now streaming on Disney+. Plus. So go get your Star Wars fix. And that, yes, that is including The Rise of Skywalker making its debut early Thank you to Disney Plus putting out some of that early content to help people out in the time of need. So very, very cool. Um, That was a little aside. But hey guys, you know, happy to be here. Still happy, healthy, and safe. Still bringing you brand new episodes each and every week when the rest of the world is on lockdown. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Before I get going, it's time to do a little plug, a little pluggy plug. Over the weekend, over on Saturday, uh, I was invited to come back and be a guest once again on a show about shows. So a very cool, once again, YouTube show uh, that actually involves my brother and a buddy of his, Dutch. And um, once again, they... You know, they, their show is kind of similar to mine. They talk a lot of uh, movie reviews, TV reviews, and then they run down some quick headline news, which of course is everything that's covered here on Am I on the Air? I think he, he poaches me each and every week for my news and then drops it on his own show. Um, but the main reason that they invited me on to their latest episode uh, was a celebration for The Rock. This past Saturday was actually The Rock's birthday, and uh, they wanted to do a top 10 countdown. Of the Rock's movies So I was like Hell to the yeah If you want to do The Rock You know that I am there Because y'all know if you've been listening to me For any time on this show You know how much I love me Dwayne The Rock Johnson So um, if you've been listening to the show For a long time you'll remember a little Rock Rolls Uh, uh, We used to do Rock Rolls all the time Because there were so many projects that The Rock was signing up for And we even did an Am I Still on the Air one time that was all based on Rock Rolls and his career. So uh, I'm going to give you a little spoiler alert right now. I think you should still check out the episode. But since we're talking about The Rock and I did want to say a happy, uh, you know, Am I on the Air belated birthday now at this point. It was a couple days ago. Um, But hey, I'm going to run down my, hey, run down, no pun intended. (laughs) Ha ha, it's on the list though. Uh, My top 10 Rock movies, okay? Um... And this was an interesting list. If you if you watch the show about shows, I kind of talked about how um, I didn't really count animated. I didn't really want to count movies where he wasn't the one of the main characters. For example, like the other guys, awesome movie. He's in the first like ten minutes and then he's gone. So it's hard for me to put the other guys in a top ten list about The Rock when he's only in the beginning of the movie. 
Uh, same thing kind of goes for Get Smart. You know, I love Get Smart. He's so cool in it. Um, but it's a Steve Carell and Hathaway movie, and he's just a side character. Um, and also Be Cool. Be Cool is one of the earliest movies that he did. Um, but his character is so great in the movie, he's just not in a ton of it. Um, so some shout outs there. Um, but talking about my whole top 10 though, let's, let's run it down real quick. Number 10, I had Rampage. Number 9, I had Faster. Number 8, San Andreas. Number 7, Jumanji The Next Level. Number 6, The Rundown. Number 5 was Hobbs and Shaw. Number 4, Central Intelligence. Number 3, Fast and Furious 6. Number 2, Fast 5. And my number 1 Dwayne The Rock Johnson film is Pain and Gain. Love me some Pain and Gain. So, uh, it was an interesting list, especially with... uh, my two co-hosts over there who uh, We all had a couple of the same movies But man, our, our lineup was drastically different And everyone had a different number one Which was really cool So uh, once again, why I like doing Am I Still on the Airs And different things like that um, Because you get such different aspects of everything Different point of views So that was pretty cool So check out a show about shows We tweeted out the link over the weekend We put it up on our Facebook page And our Twitter so click the link, watch the show, have a good time, have a good laugh with us over there. Okay, now switching into what you came for here tonight, uh, I got one big review for you guys. I haven't really seen any new movies because uh, there hasn't really been much, um, but I did binge the hell out of a show that just came out this past weekend and I want to talk about it. It's on Amazon Prime and the show is titled Upload. Uh, hence our title tonight being Uploaded um, Upload is a show That I saw a trailer for it a couple months ago And I thought the trailer was fantastic I was like man this show has a ton of potential So the show dropped on Friday on Amazon Prime And they dropped all 10 episodes And um, I remember when I started it My wife was like are you really starting a whole new show right now She was like can't we just finish the other you know, 20 shows That we're several episodes into And we keep jumping around And I was like, no, I've been waiting for this show. I really, really want to watch Upload. And I'll tell you, it's 10 episodes. We binged five episodes on Saturday and the other five episodes on Sunday. uh, And already done with the whole series in that first weekend. If that doesn't tell you the show is really, really good, I don't know what will. (laughs) Because I don't binge shows that fast. But I could not get enough of Upload. This show is fantastic. It's one of the best shows I've seen in years. I love the concept of it. I love the characters in it. I love the um, connection between people. I love the heart. I love the humor. Everything worked for me on this show. I mean, it really hit on all cylinders. Uh, The premise of the show is that it's set in the future. It's set in the year 2033. And the main character, played by um, Robbie Robbie Amell, um, of course, Stephen Amell's cousin from... uh, Arrow and uh, Robbie was even on Legends of Tomorrow for a little bit Uh, He was on Flash for a little bit He had his own show The Tomorrow People For a little bit Um, He um, And this is not really a spoiler this is in the trailer He he ends up getting in a car crash uh, In the first episode And they're taking him in for surgery And it's kind of like a a on the spot Decision it's like do you want to go to surgery And we can maybe fix you But you might also die Or you can go to the upload department And what the upload department does Is basically they scan your brain And they upload your consciousness And all your memories to a computer And Your body obviously dies Um, But They can save you so to speak By creating It's hard It's a little complicated but basically they take your Essence and they put you into This like VR world So think about it that way right So they have this call center type place That um, literally create your avatar They take pictures of you from your past And they draw you and they create your avatar And then once your avatar is up and running They download your consciousness to it And you live in this virtual reality world The cool thing about it is that you can actually still Kind of have a relationship You can still talk to the people you love Because they can put on a headset And come visit you in your VR world 
Um, but there's all different kinds of aspects to this VR world, right? There's the ones for the rich people. Um, there's, of course, what they call the two gigs, which is like the really bummy, just got no money that I can barely survive month to month. Um, there, you know, there's the dark web portion of it. I mean, it's really, really cool. So, um, I don't want to say much more else about it because I don't want to give anything away. Um, but man, was this show good. It's so unique and it left off on such a crazy spot that I'm just like, oh my God, this show better get a second season because <laughs> I want it right now. Um, I was so, so pleasantly surprised. I was telling everybody today at work, uh, and I was texting my friends and family, just like, you need to watch Upload. Uh, it is such a fantastic show, and I really want to just scream it to the mountains, because I know a lot of people have never even heard of it, never saw the trailer. I know a lot of people don't watch a lot of the Prime shows that come out, and I, I'm one of them too, man. There's There's a bunch of shows I think look good on Prime, and they're always in my queue, and I never watch them. Uh, besides the boys, <laughs> but um, I binged the hell out of Upload, and it's funny because my wife didn't even want to start it, and by episode three, she was like, I really like this show, and when it was over, she was telling all her friends and family to go watch this show, so it just goes to show you, it really works for everybody, um, the characters are great, um, I, I just I just can't speak highly enough for it, uh, if I gave a TV show off of a star scale, I would give Upload five out of five, I really, really dug it, and it was a pleasant, pleasant surprise to get into at a time like this when I feel like a lot of shows aren't really kind of cutting it. So uh, that's my big review of the week is Upload, so please go check it out on Amazon Prime, okay? All right, with that being said, let's switch gears and get on over to the news of the last week. So there's been some rumors that they've been wanting to move forward with a Now You See Me Part 3, and it looks like they are starting to move that move that a little bit further than we thought because they've hired a writer who is now penning the script and starting development on a Now You See Me 3. So we'll see where that goes. Netflix picks up an anthology series from the Orange is the New Black production team. It's going to be called Social Distance. Uh, Top Gun is coming to 4K UHD for the very first time. So that is awesome. I'll definitely grab that once it's actually released. Alex Kurtzman is adapting The Girl Who Could Move Shit With Her Mind for television. So there you go. They're adapting that for a television show. Um, i never heard of it, but that's a very interesting name for a book. BritBox announces their next original co-production, which is going to be starring Keely Hawes, and that will be called Honor. Scott Free Productions is developing the End of October adaptation. One Day at a Time is getting a spring animated special. We have the Season 7 trailer for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, I'm so concerned with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7 because I love this show. I really, really do, and I'm sad it's the last season, but I don't know, man. I wasn't really digging this trailer, and I don't like that they're going back to the past. It doesn't really make much sense. I'm hoping it plays out better than the trailer is leading it to be, but I'll be there. I'll be there to check it out. Netflix's Fuller House is set to drop their final episodes in June. We have the new Season 2 trailer for Homecoming Season 2 on Amazon Prime with Janelle Monet. A live-action Goosebumps series is in development. Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels are set to be adapted um, by Endeavor Content and Motive Pictures. Trolls World Tour has already grossed over $100 million dollars in just three weeks on VOD So big congratulations there I knew it would make a lot of money There was a lot of naysayers out there And I was like dude we're all home with our families I paid the 20 bucks for it Everybody I know with kids paid 20 bucks to watch this thing um, and, and they had fun with it man My daughter loved Trolls World Tour So I think it's great that they made 100 million in the first three weeks And then right on the flip side of them Coming out and saying that AMC Theaters came out and vowed to no longer play any movies from Universal Pictures. So, on one hand, we were celebrating, and the very next hand, AMC said, fuck y'all. <laughs> uh, and then that was actually followed up the next day by Regal Cinemas saying they were going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, but, like, really threatening to not play Universal Pictures in your theaters because of trolls just seems really, really kiddish. Um, they seem like little crybabies 
and whiny little bitches that are like, I can't believe that you put that movie out on VOD. You should have waited to come put it out in the theater. Guys, the movie theaters were closed. There was every intention in the world to release Trolls in a movie theater. We were all going to go see it. And then the pandemic happened and theaters got shut down. I'm sorry, but, you know, sometimes the studios have to make a decision. I know everybody else and their mom loves shifting all these movies a year later for 2021 and all this other crap. Well, some other studios are like, we need some money now and we're just going to release this thing on VOD. Um, I think what really stirred up AMC theaters is the fact that the uh, president of Universal said, hey, because Trolls was such a success, down the road we're going to be looking at maybe doing like a split model and we'll still do some theatrical movies and we'll do some more VOD um, because it was a, it was a success. And I think AMC read that in that light of like, oh, really? You're going to do this in the future too? And then got real mad and said, fine, then we're never going to play your movies again. And that just seems dumb to me because Universal has billion dollar franchises like Fast and Furious and like Minions and Despicable Me and all that stuff. Secret Life of Pets. Why would you F with Universal? It just doesn't make sense. Your movie theaters, especially like AMC who just filed for bankruptcy and needs loans. You don't go and say, we're not going to play your movies. You're damn right you're going to play those fucking movies because you need to make money. So, just my two cents on the thing. We'll see how long this lasts, but I see... I see the movie theaters probably caving in eventually to air Universal movies when they have to because, yeah, I just don't see it going any other way. Um, we have the first trailer for Debt Collectors, which is a new straight-to-VOD movie, speaking of, with Scott Atkins. The Titan Games is coming back for Season 2. That's right. Uh, premiere date is coming at the end of May. All 13 episodes were completed pre-coronavirus crisis, so you don't have to worry about that getting shut down and not ending properly. So um, NBC really ramping up new content coming at the end of the month. We got Titan Games, we got World of Dance, we got America's Got Talent, so a lot of cool stuff coming towards the end of the month. Um, David Leach and the writers behind the black uh, blockbuster creature feature The Meg, John and Eric Hober are partnering for a new thriller called Fast and Loose which will be for STX Films Karen Gillan is set to lead the cast of a new sci-fi thriller called Duel which will be with Aaron Paul, Beulah Cole, Martha Kelly and Jesse Eisenberg also set to appear in the film um, The new HBO movie with Hugh Jackman Called Bad Education is now streaming on HBO, HBO Now, HBO Max, HBO Plus, whatever the hell. Just check it out. I still need to watch this movie. I was going to watch it last weekend and then I got stuck on upload. So I'll hopefully maybe get to it this weekend. Toy Story 4 directors developing a new animated Transformers prequel movie. That's right. So a Transformers prequel movie with Optimus and Megatron as friends and then having a breakup and then the war on Cybertron begins uh, So I think that'll be cool man I'm down It's a, It's been probably what 30 years Since the animated movie came out uh, So yeah let's get another one Why not The Oscars eligibility rules are being tweaked Amidst the pandemic They don't like to honor streaming movies But due to everything going streaming They kind of are up against the wall here And I think they're like Yeah we're going to have to let the streaming movies in on it this year Chad Stahelski and David Leach are returning for The Matrix 4 And this is awesome If you know those names, they sound familiar Yes, it's the guys behind John Wick Of course, David Leach did Deadpool and he did Hobbs and Shaw um, They Before they did all the John Wick movies and all their own stuff uh, They were actually stunt coordinators for a lot of blockbusters Including the original Matrix trilogy So it's very cool to see them coming back to help lend a hand and crafting the action for Matrix 4 Wes Ball is set to helm Amblin's first 15 Lives of Harry, Aug uh, Harry August adaptation Kelly Cuoco joins Kevin Hart in The Man from Toronto um, TBS is reviving Wipeout for an 8th season We're getting desperate out there Christopher Nolan's Tenet is projecting a low box office opening Ooh 
Uh, Tenet might actually be the first movie, first new movie that plays in theaters when they open back up. What I'm hearing at this point is all movie theaters will remain closed till July 15th, which will be the weekend I believe the Tenet comes out. So um, they're not going to, even if theaters want to open early, there's no new releases coming out until July 15th. So insane in the membrane. Reno 911 is back with season 7 Yes it's on Quibi And it made it's debut today So I haven't had a chance to watch any of the episodes I will check them out I'm so excited I'm a big Reno 911 fan So very very stoked that season 7 Is finally here Rawson Marshall Thurber Is in talks to helm a spy Versus spy movie This is something that I know they've been trying to get going For a long long time and uh, Ross and Marshall Thurber, real good action director. Did um, uh, he did? Um, oh my God, I'm spacing now. He did Rampage, and he did the uh, San Andreas. Uh, not San Andreas. It's fucking Grand Theft Auto. Uh, Sa- <laughs> what the fuck is that movie? The fucking earthquake one. Um, and this shit drives me nuts when this happens. Live on the damn show Um Hmm It is San Andreas San Andreas The fuck am I thinking San Grand Theft Auto San Andreas I don't know (laughs) I'm confusing myself now at this point Um But yeah San Andreas The Earthquake movie So Uh Real good action director Doing Spy vs. Spy Why not man Let's do it We also have the trailer For the new season of Reno 911 If you want to maybe check that out Before Getting into your quibby um, let's see. A Menudo themed singing competition series aims to rebuild the iconic boy band. So there you go. Uh, World of Dance will be shaking things up with blind battles and more game changing twists in season four. And we have a link up to meet all 34 acts right now on our Twitter. Uh, Disney Family Sing Along. That was a real big hit. Kind of something they just threw together. And it was a massive hit People are looking for new content Uh, So they put together Disney Family Sing Along Volume 2 That's right And it's set for Mother's Day on ABC Um, LeBron James Has uh, finally announced The Space Jam 2 title and logo That's right Um, Space Jam 2 is called Space Jam A New Legacy Um I don't know man I'm curious to see how well that one does But Space Jam A New Legacy uh, Coming soon The Fanning sister led The Nightingale Has been delayed by a year Quibi is debuting uh, Select free episodes On their YouTube channel right now If you want to check it out Disney is also developing A live action Hercules remake With the writer from Shang-Chi For Marvel So very cool there um, I don't know man Hercules is not the one I would want adapted <laughs> If they were doing live action films But you know I think eventually they're going to end up doing it for all of them So why not uh, Gina Rodriguez is The aliens are stealing our weed Comedy spec has landed over at Paramount Pictures Adam Driver is set to lead Jeff Nichols new Yankee Commandante Patty Jenkins gives an update on Wonder Woman 3 And a new of Amazon spinoff That's right so they are looking to actually move to this Amazon spinoff after Wonder Woman 2 So she could take a little break, she'll produce it, she's not going to direct it And then possibly come back to do Wonder Woman 3 uh, and finish her story arc She says she does have a trilogy plan, she knows where the story is going And um, yeah, I trust in her and as of now, Wonder Woman 1984 is still set to come out in August Adam Scott has a new game show coming out that he's hosting called Don't So you can check out that trailer right now My Brilliant Friend has been renewed for a third season over on HBO Quiver and Redbox have acquired a new thriller movie called Becky Which will be coming out straight to VOD in June The cool thing about this for me is that Kevin James is in it And he actually plays a bad guy From my understanding That they're going after this girl Becky That's named in the movie Um, And that you get to see Kevin James In a new light for the first time ever Um, I'm a massive Kevin James fan Ever since King of Queens I love his stand up I try to be involved with anything he does So I'm very very curious Because he always does comedies 
how it's going to be to see him as a villain in something like this. So I am down to rent Becky when it comes out and give this movie a shot. I'm really, really stoked. Uh, Vin Diesel is supposedly battling uh, for a producer credit on Fast and Furious. Uh, he's fighting with the Producers Guild of America, the PGA. Um, this is weird to me because I always assumed, you know, Vin was always a producer on Fast and Furious. Um, I don't know why he's fighting for that credit unless he had it and they took it away. Um, but there's some big beef going on there. We don't have many details to it, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens in that world. All right, so next up, we have the season two trailer for Raimi. Check out that one. Uh, I'm I'm sad about this next piece of news, and I'm hoping that this is a swerve. So some rumors came out several, several months ago that maybe in Spider-Man 3, because of the way Spider-Man Far From Home ended... That he was going to need a lawyer And that his lawyer would be none other Than Matt Murdock A.K.A. Daredevil And that Daredevil would have a part In this new Spider-Man 3 And that it would be Charlie Cox Returning and reprising his role From the Netflix series I love this rumor And I thought it made a total amount of sense Well Unfortunately A couple days ago Doing press Charlie Cox said that his Daredevil will not be in the next Spider-Man sequel. He said that he hasn't been contacted. No one has said anything to him. And that if there was going to be a Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil, in the next Spider-Man movie, that it wouldn't be his version. Uh, Not that he's opposed to do it. He says just that's not in the cards right now. So, we've heard this in the past. We've heard this several times from people who we know were in movies and they're like, I'm not in it, you know, like that's don't listen. I can see them wanting to keep this, you know, a surprise for the majority of the public. So my fingers are crossed that we will see Charlie Cox. I don't see why they would recast Daredevil and Matt Murdock at this point. Um, that those Netflix series were set in the world of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I don't know why they would feel the need to recast And Charlie was an amazing daredevil So um, Once again my fingers are crossed that maybe he will Pop up in Spider-Man 3 And we will see Harry Coon joins the new show The Gilded Age Replacing Amanda Peet in the new HBO drama From the Downton Abbey creator The USA Network cheerleading drama Dare Me has been cancelled After just one season Uh, The Flash's Grant Gustin Season 8 and 9 talks were interrupted By the pandemic, that's right Which is so funny because So he was negotiating for seasons 8 and 9 Right? And they're like, oh we had to stop Because of the pandemic, I'm sorry, so you can't have A phone call? You can't do a Zoom call? (laughs) Like How how do talks get interrupted? I get filming, I get not being able to maybe Film another episode in the season But um Really negotiations? Like, come on, guys, you gotta work a little harder on that one. Uh, the new Steve Carell Space Force show is coming to Netflix later this month, and I'm super stoked on that. Um, Ryan Reynolds has a new game show called Don't, um, which has rewards for players doing nothing. <laughs> so I have to check that out. Uh, Eddie Murphy, Tiffany Haddish, and Adam Sandler are all set for a new lockdown friendly special on May 10th. That should be really good. Fox has greenlit a new 10 episode series of unscriptedness called Celebrity Watch Party uh, Which will, as its name implies, will feature famous people in their homes Discussing the biggest shows and news events on TV in the past week So I know this show debuts later this week on television on Fox Uh, I do have the DVR set to watch it It's probably going to be cheesy as hell But I do appreciate you Fox Trying to put something together during this pandemic And have celebrities talk about current events Why not? So let's do it Especially in the entertainment world Um, Sorry, give me one sec Paramount Paramount Pictures plans a new G.I. Joe movie After its Snake Eyes solo film So yes, there is a new Snake Eyes film uh, Which is now entitled Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins, I believe Um, And that comes out, I believe, in October Uh, Now they're going to move forward with an actual G.I. Joe reboot Which will bring back Henry Golding as Snake Eyes um, But all new characters So 
Uh, I believe Scarlet is in the Snake Eyes movie, so she'll probably join him. But outside that, it's going to be a full reboot with all new cast. So don't expect The Rock or Channing Tatum or any of those people to come back for another movie. Which is unfortunate, because I, I know that they were always trying to make a sequel with The Rock. And just stuff kept happening, so that is unfortunate. I would have liked to have seen another G.I. Joe with him. Sony is developing a bubble adaptation with Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Lionsgate has revealed some new release dates. And here we go once again. <sighs> Let me woo-saw real quick because they're screwing us. They're screwing us all over again. So first up is Antebellum. Uh, Antebellum was supposed to come out on April 24th. It should have already been out. I will now open on August 21st. So not too bad. Cool. Um, Fatal, which was originally set for a June 18th release, has now been scheduled for a Halloween 2020 debut. Uh, It's going to be a suspenseful and provocative psychological thriller with a successful sports agent named Darren, played by Michael Ely, watches his perfect life slowly disappear when he becomes entangled in a police investigation led by a discredited, disgraced, and determined detective played by Hilary Swank, with whom he had a wild one-night stand. Uh, the next movie is Voyagers. Voyagers was previously undated and will now come out on November 25th, 2020. The Asset, starring Samuel L. Jackson, has received a release date of April 23rd, 2021. Here we go with the next year bullshit. Um, Michael Keaton and Maggie Q co-star. This sounds really, really good. And now we got to wait another year. Spiral, which was the new Saw movie with Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson, which was originally going to come out in May. We were going to see it in a couple weeks. Um, and it's funny because actually the original release date was actually October 2020. They moved it up to May 2020, but then everything happened. So it was like, okay, it's going to be pushed back and it was indefinite. We didn't know where it would land. Well, now it lands one year from now on May 21st, 2021. Why? I mean, I'm sorry, but, but Spiral is the type of movie that you should just put out on VOD. Why are you sticking it on a whole nother year later, man? It is so frustrating. I'm getting so tired of these year delays. Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Previously slated for July 2020. Guess what? July 16, 2021. Yep, throw it back a year. Why not? Um, Do we not think that next summer is going to be a little overcrowded at all? I mean, this is just beyond ridiculous. The Hitman Wife's Bodyguard, right? The sequel to The Hitman's Bodyguard with Ryan Reynolds, Samuel L. Jackson... Um, that movie was supposed to come out in just a couple months in August. Well, guess what? How about we go to August 20th, 2021? That's right. Let's just shoot it back a year. Why not? Come on. Another year. What's, what's the, what's the hurt? What's the hurt? Um, so there you go, man. That is, uh, the big calendar pushbacks from Lionsgate. It's ridiculous. All the high profile movies pushed back an entire goddamn year. So stupid. But guess what? You know, I, I as I as I thought the dust settled, it didn't. Because a movie I'm really looking forward to, John Wick, Chapter 4. <sighs> yep, it was going to come out May 21st, 2021. Guess what? Let's just throw it back a year. Safe bet, right? May 27th, 2022, bam! Let's just put it out a whole nother year later. These year release dates are pissing me off. So yeah, John Wick Chapter 4. We'll just wait another couple years for that one. HBO renews Insecure for a fifth season. Sam Rockwell and Ben Swartz are set to lead a new comedy film. So that'll be pretty cool. Ron Howard signs on for the Thai Cave Rescue biopic called 13 Lives. Uh, NBC has released the Parks and Rec reunion special on YouTube. So check it out. It was actually really, really cute. Macon Blair is set to direct Josh Brolin and Peter Dinklage in a new comedy called Brothers. Uh, Darren Chris is set to lead a new animated voice cast for a new Superman animated movie called Superman Man of Tomorrow. Um, Happy Endings says that they're going to do a reunion as well. A scripted charity reading set to feature new material is in the works. 
Um, and Dina Menzel, Kiki Palmer have joined the Disney Family Sing Along Part 2. There's another Transformers movie, along with The Trial of the Chicago 7, uh, that have been given some new release dates. Now, I won't get mad about Transformers because this is a new movie that did not have a release date before this, so it's not them pushing it back. An as yet untitled Transformers film um, is set to receive a wide release on June 24th, 2022. Now, this is supposed to be different than the animated movie we talked about earlier. Then we have Aaron Sorkin's The Trial of the Chicago 7, which will get a limited release on September 25th and then go wide on October 16th. The film, which follows the 1969 trial of seven people charged with conspiracy by the federal government, stars Eddie Redmayne, Sasha Baron Cohen, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Frank Langella. Uh, This is Aaron Sorkin's second directed feature after Molly's Game, which I absolutely love Molly's Game. We have the trailer for Lovecraft Country, the new trailer for Jordan Peele and J.J. Abrams' new HBO horror series, so check that out. Um, James Wan and Transformers producer uh, Don Murphy are teaming up to adapt a new sci-fi time travel story called Hunting Season, which will be penned by the John Wick creator and writer Derek Kolstad. So very, very cool there. Um, the Parks and Rec reunion special scored a 1.4 rating among adults, 18 to 49, and a 3.67 million viewers, the best demo number for an NBC Thursday comedy this entire season. So very, very cool there. Uh, David E. Kelly's The Lincoln Lawyer adaptation is not moving forward at CBS. I was looking forward to that. I actually really liked The Lincoln Lawyer, and I was looking forward to a TV version, but... I guess we'll hold off there. They will ship it around other networks to see if anybody wants to pick it up. Lauren Graham is set to return for Zoe's uh, Extraordinary Playlist if it comes back for a second season. Um, although they w- may require some tricky maneuvering because she's also a main character in the new Mighty Duck show coming to Disney+. Plus. So they're going to have to kind of dance around that one because scheduling is kind of tight due to the pandemic. Uh Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Part 2 Officially dated for October 7th 2022 So that's that Uh, Sony has officially unveiled Their stupid name For their Spider-Man shared universe That's right, are you ready for it? It's called the SPUMC The SPUMC (laughs) SPUMC Which stands for the Sony Pictures Universe Of Marvel Characters Stupid Stupid, stupid, stupid so there you go. Sony's official Spider-Man universe is Spumps, Spumps, Spumps. <laughs> Sony Pictures universe of Marvel characters. Oh shit! HBO Max officially launches on May twenty seventh, and if you sign up early, you can actually save about five bucks a month on your subscription. So check it out. Uh, I actually signed up already the other night. Uh, if you do sign up, you actually get instant access to HBO Now. Uh, right away So that's kind of cool You get a little something something for your signing up early And then you'll get full access to the HBO Max app On May 27th So check it out You can get it for 11 bucks a month instead of 15 um, Let's see here What else we got Vin Diesel says that he he's going to receive The latest Riddick script next week Super stoked on that man I love me the Riddick movie So I, I would love to see another one uh, the OWN channel, their show Greenleaf Is set to end with an 8 episode Season 5, and you can check out the trailer Now, it's for a June premiere um, Robert Rodriguez Confirmed as directing an episode of The Mandalorian, also Peyton Reed Teases that he's got some involvement With The Mandalorian And an, a sequel to Extraction Is a go over on Netflix So congratulations to the Chris Hemsworth Movie, um, we reviewed this On the last episode um, Netflix is saying this is the most watched debut of an original movie ever on their platform Over 90 million people watched it Which is nuts So congratulations to Extraction No shit that a sequel is a go uh, Joe Russo from the Russo Brothers has been hired to write the script So he's putting it together And then once the script is made They'll then close the deals for everybody else to return They're not sure yet if it'll be a prequel or a direct sequel They're going to play around with that But um, yes, they're moving forward with something else from Extraction Uh, The writers for A Quiet Place are partnering with Sam Raimi For a new Sony thriller, which is pretty cool 
Congratulations to Taika Watiti, which they finally made the news official because it is May the 4th that he is going to direct and co-write a new Star Wars feature film for theatrical release. Award Academy Award winning nominee, uh sorry, can't be a winning nominee. Academy Award nominee Christy Wilson uh Carnes um is set to co-write the screenplay with Watiti. So this is awesome. We heard rumors, we talked about rumors for a long time that Taika was going to do something in the Star Wars world, especially after he dabbled in the Mandalorian. It was just uh it was just timing, right? We just we knew it would come. It would just have to wait and see. And now we got the official announcement on May the 4th. So congratulations there to Taika Waititi who I think is going to do something pretty pretty cool with the Star Wars universe. All right. Um, another movie, Jumpin' the Gun, from theatrical to VOD, is the new Nico- Dakota Johnson, Tracy Ellis Ross movie, The High Note. That's right, The High Note is officially going to make its debut on VOD. It was originally set for a theatrical release on Friday, May 8th, so this Friday. Um, but now the movie will be available on May 29th, on demand, for that uh, in-theater rental price of 1999. It does not look like it's available to buy. It looks like you can just rent it for the 48-hour period for 1999. The Twilight Zone Season 2 has added Journey Smollett Bell and Topher Grace to Season 2 on top of the already announced cast that we've talked about before. So check that out if you want to know more. Jerry Seinfeld's comedian, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee may actually be ending uh, as it wraps up its current season. After 11 acclaimed seasons, they might be finishing that up. I am super stoked about this news. Nicolas Cage is set to portray the Tiger King's Joe Exotic in a new scripted series. That's right, this will be the first television series ever for Nicolas Cage. And man, him playing Tiger King, I am so down with this. I've already seen the photoshops, people taking pictures of him from Con Air, putting the mustache on him. It's so good. Um, yes, a scripted series of Tiger King. This is going to be awesome. And we'll see what network ends up picking this one up. Uh, but I love it, man. Nicolas Cage, Joe Exotic. AMC is extending Friday Night In with the Morgans for four more new episodes. Netflix announces they're going to do a reunion episode for Too Hot to Handle. Sylvester Stallone says that a Demolition Man Part 2 is reportedly in the works. I know. That this is only being rumored because of the damn seashells. Because (laughs) if you've seen Demolition Man, you know that in the bathroom there's seashells. And everybody's wondering, how do the seashells work? Um, Because when this pandemic started and there was no toilet paper to be found, uh, Demolition Man was just trending all over the place because everybody was talking about the seashells. So now now all of a sudden, after all these years, they're going to (laughs) say, we're going to do a sequel. Um, So, yeah. I don't know, man. Will this ever come to fruition? We don't know. I think they're just trying to capitalize on kind of the nostalgia there. But I do love Demolition, man. Such a good movie. Uh, I believe the first movie was Sandra Bullock, which is so cool. It'd be awesome if she came back for it, too. Um, So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Demolition, man. Uh, Stephanie Meyer, who wrote the Twilight books, set a release date for her new Twilight novel called Midnight Sun. Uh, right now it's just a book It doesn't look like they're making a movie yet But you know what comes next um, The Mandalorian's visual effects team Says that season 2 will not be delayed So don't worry it'll be on time Which I love um, Ralph Fiennes is set to play Miss Trunchbull In Netflix's Matilda film um, And then Vader Immortal is coming to the PlayStation VR later this summer, which is fantastic. Tom Cruise says he's looking to shoot a movie in outer space with Elon Musk's SpaceX. Of course, Tom Cruise would want to do that, and I'm sure he will will get it done. The Peacock's reboot of Battlestar Galactica finds its uh, writer... So they're going to start putting that together Speaking of Peacock by the way I did want to mention I do have The new NBC streaming service Peacock Uh, I am an Xfinity Comcast Customer so they gave me early Access to it the actual Peacock app does not launch till July So the app is Okay for right now Um, There's no original content on it it's just basically Old TV shows and movies and of course Their current lineup so It's kind of cool to check out you can watch clips From SNL stuff like that um, 
but once July hits, that's when a lot of their new original content will launch, and they got Saved by the Bell and Punky Brewster, and they're gonna have MacGruber and the new Battlestar Galactica. They got a lot of stuff cooking up for the Peacock Network. So, uh, if you have Comcast or Xfinity, if you just say it into your voice remote, um, you should have early access to it, and it is free. It's included in your cable package. If you want to have a version of it with no commercials, you can upgrade it for five bucks a month. All right, um, the Michael Yuri Becky Newton comedy pilot Fun is not moving forward at CBS, so we'll see what goes on with it from there. Um, and shout out to CBS's show All Rise because they were the first drama series to attempt uh, a filmed at home quarantine specific new episode of television. Yes, they did it all through Zoom and everything, which was actually pretty cool. I don't watch All Rise. I had intended to when the season started and it got away from me and I'm just too busy, so I didn't end up getting into it. But I do think it's pretty cool that they did something like this. Uh, And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our show. And I can't believe it. We went 45 minutes, so I'm pretty shocked by that because I feel like there's not a ton of news lately, but somehow we still seem to go 40, 45 minutes. Um, But hey, There's nothing wrong with that. It's new content for all y'all, and that's what I'm here for. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, Thank you for your support. Thank you for tuning in and listening every single week, telling your friends, telling your family, and just uh, continuing to promote and get the word out there. Our official webpage is amiontheair.com. We are available on Facebook, so give us a like, facebook.com slash amiontheair. You can follow us on Twitter at Am I on the Air directly. Or you can follow me on Twitter at DX Don Mega. Follow me on Stardust at Simply Don Mega, D O N M E G A. Uh, it's a very cool video review app, so follow me and I'll follow you back. Of course, uh, you can get us on Apple Podcast. If Apple Podcast ain't your thing, don't you worry. We're streaming on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Podchaser, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, Google Play Podcast. And all over the interwebs wherever podcasts are found. Um, we are on YouTube, youtube.com slash am I on the air. We're on Instagram. And of course, shout out to our great affiliates at reddragonsradio.com. That's Red Dragons with an S radio.com. Follow on Twitter at the same handle, Red Dragons Radio. Really cool podcasting website that streams not only us, but a lot of cool podcasts always on demand through Red Dragons Radio. So that'll do it for me on this May the 4th. I thank you so much for listening. Please continue to take care of yourselves and each other. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. You know the deal by now, right? Keep everybody safe. Don't go out if you don't have to. Um, And I hope everybody's doing very well out there. So, yeah, I guess we'll just end it like this. May the 4th be with you. Till next time, y'all. Peace. Bye, everybody. Red Red Dragons. Red Dragons.